All right, folks, let's talk, go to our panel here, of course, Tiffany Lawton, Brandon Cooper, Jameer Burley, also joining us, Dr. Wendy Osefo. She is, of course, a uh, professor uh, of education, Johns Hopkins University. Uh, so he, he's what So, you know, Trump said he's sending a bunch of people to Chicago. Y'all, he ain't got a plan. He has no plan. <laughs> he's uh, going to arrest everybody. No, he has no plan. I actually asked him about it. He has no plan. <laughs> uh, no, he doesn't. I don't know why you assumed he did when he said yeah. No, no, he doesn't. The plan so, is enforcement. But, 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 but the thing here, so you heard the doctor there. He said that, look, you've got to have a community uh, who speaks up on this issue. Jamira, uh, you have had to deal with the issue of gun violence in Philadelphia. Your thoughts, what do you have to say? I think it's unlikely that they're ever going to go to the police with the current relationship the way it is. I mean, we're talking about a police force that have criminalized the black community for decades and have created a hostile environment where community members don't feel safe going to the police and reporting incidents in their community. So how do people in that community, though, stop these shootings? Because when you see 103 shot over the July 4th weekend, 56 shot, 13, 15 kill, young folks kill. I mean, it's not an easy solution. We're talking about a community that have been oppressed for decades. Like, you have to pull back the layers and really talk about what right. does healing and reconciliation look like? What does providing jobs and education opportunities in those areas of the city? And what does preventing gentrification from happening, which only increases criminalization? Wendy? In Chicago, we all know it's easier to get a gun than it is to get a job. Yep. But if we even go further, if we tease it out even some more, we look at the mayor who is saying that if you do not have a plan after high school, you are going yep. to get penalized. This should be a community that is resource-based, but not based on punitive measures. And that's what is the problem. With black and brown communities, what we often have the history of doing is this narrative, and it's a pervasive narrative, that when something happens, instead of us saying, well, what are the resources lacking that has caused this issue to permeate through this community? Mm -hmm. We then say, no, since you did X, Y, and Z, you will be penalized in this harsh measure that is often harsher than what is seen in white communities. So what's not good and what should not happen is we penalize young black and brown individuals for their community in which you have done nothing to improve. Mm -hmm. Tiffany? No, I agree both with what Jameer and Wendy both said. That there is a um, reactiveness that happens to black communities that's not happening with white communities. Mm -hmm. And this Chicago issue that we're talking about right now is not new at all. You have folks who have been trying to fund and support education like Chance the Rapper. You have folks who have gone and, uh, gone and done community benefits that have happened there. You've had folks who are coming out trying to say we need to stop the violence and people who are on the corner praying and whatnot. But Roland, to your point and your question that you asked him earlier around where are the other men's groups, the other groups of forces that can come out and do this work on our own, that, and he said there aren't any I thought that that was very interesting. Um, we we are not in a position, and I am not in a position ever, to call the police. I do not trust the police. I will not call the police if there is an emergency. And Chicago residents should not feel any differently. However, when we talk about solutions, Roland, your question around where are the other men groups that are standing on the block to stop that work, that's to stop the violence that's happening on the corner, that needs to be a conversation that we're having proactively. Because, like you said, Donald Trump, the, ele the elected officials that are there, the um, the pastors that are there, et cetera, are not doing anything to fix the situation. And it's not, this is not a new problem. This has happened, and we've seen Chicago in that light for right. years, and right. we need to take a different Brandon. approach. Brandon, I would say it's twofold. I agree with what's been said so far. The social and economic factors mm -hmm. you're talking about, whether it's jobs um, and also education, I think is a major part. Secondly, you're talking about the leadership in Chicago. I think we all can agree Ron Emanuel should not be in the job Trash. right now. What he's doing with the police department and what he's doing with the school system now needs help. Um, but to your point as well, last week you had at the Alpha event, you were talking about the need for black organizations, whether it's Greek or mentoring nonprofits like I'm part of, being more active. I definitely see it on the front lines. There's always uh, the need is greater than the resources. So we definitely had that conversation with our community about what we can do to stop this violence. Our right. days on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us, he wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't no cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.